Welcome to Canatech's podcast. I'm your host, Saul Kane. Canatech has been disrupting the global cannabis space for the last five years. And in this series, we bring you cannabis thought leaders from across the globe. On this week's episode, I interview David Bassa, a serial entrepreneur in the cannabis space here in Israel. I interviewed David over eight weeks ago, and I wanted to find out this week how COVID has affected the clinical trial space, how do patients get product, how do we deal with patients not going to hospitals and recruiting them into clinical trials. I hope you enjoy it. Hi and welcome. We have with us uh, David Bassa from Canaline Stero Canamore Group. Uh, David was on our podcast uh, a while back with uh, some news about a deal that they were making with Caliterra. Uh, but since then, we are moving into uh, what it's like to be in clinical trials during these challenging times. And uh, David, uh, tell us a little bit about your presence in the clinical cannabis space yes um let me start with the fact that we are in in the field for about seven years uh, some of my doctors are only 10 years and we're involved in the various indications um not to talk only about the one that was sold but the, the current uh, running clinical trials are uh, two clinical trials but by the end of uh, 2020 we should be uh, having six parallel clinical trials in phase 2a uh, level and um, this is happening here it's not easy but this is happening here due to the main support that we are getting from our strategic partner Clalit. Clalit is the largest HMO in Israel. And with the quarantine um, and the COVID effects and the shift to uh, viral uh, trials how has it affected your clinical trials? Um, and have you fully recovered and running smoothly? Well, the first uh, questions, uh, we did have problems for about two months. Um, some people couldn't uh, get to the hospitals. Some hospitals didn't want to get uh, people. And um, uh, more than that, it was very hard to accept new patients. You need to do several procedures and some screening and this was not happening for so all our trials i mean the current two running trials had a delay of two months those that were in the trial continued the trial with special delivery that we made for the medicine to their homes um, today i'm happy to say that there is no uh, restrictions and everything is running again and clalit is a partner so you are partnered with the largest hmo here in Israel that allows access, I guess, for you uh, to patients, researchers, doctors. Tell us a little bit about uh, Clalit as your partner. Uh, first, I can just tell you that they're a great partner because they really are very helpful in, um, in almost everything that we are doing. It starts with the IDs that are generated by the physicians of Clalit. Uh, then Clalit licenses um, the project to us. We are uh, investing in all the relevant uh, preclinical uh, needs that we need to do. And then when we move again to the step of uh, clinical trials, then Clalit is uh, very helpful and enable, uh, enabling us the several sites they have in their hospitals. And that's where the clinical trials are uh, occurring. Um, and we are definitely doing it in uh, less cost than regular clinical trial is doing. We are getting the best physicians to work with us and in general, they're a great partner to partner with. And how would you uh, class the response from the physicians? Are they excited by the potential of cannabinoids? Have they left the stigma behind and really looking at this uh, as the next generation of molecules that, that can help to treat disease? Well, those that work with me would be in the extreme side of in favoring the cannabis uh, treatment. Um, Let's speak about several of them that saw already beneficial results. Take, for example, Dr. Ishurun, who's working with me on the steroids idea, and he's been uh, behind the, the success of the GVHD study in the past. Take uh, Dr. Timna Naftali, 
who has seen uh, advanced progress in the in the treatment of their IBD uh, patients. So those physicians that are working with me are really very uh, enthusiastic and they really push the research ahead. And I'm talking about about 10 or 12 different physicians. Most of them are uh, heads of departments. They are leaders in their field and they are very, very keen to end the trial and hopefully to get uh, good results. And you're encouraged by the results that you're seeing. Uh, you, you mentioned the GVHD study uh, that uh, was done a few years ago and obviously led to, to some others. But tell us a little more about some of the success that, that you're seeing uh, in the clinical trials. I can define two different clinical trials that we already saw the success. So anything related to GVHD, we were able to show great treatment results where we expected mortality rate of 80% that was reduced to 0%. Or when you're talking about prevention and you're talking about 50% uh, going down to 10% of getting the GVHD. So this was proven with more than 150 different patients. Within the steroids uh, field, we are early, we are still early. However, we did have a clear observation with 10 people, 10 patients, five of them uh, responded with the steroid reduction of about 80% of the steroid amount they were taking. The other five were refractory patients. They didn't respond to steroid treatment. Once we gave them the CBD, they started to respond. So within those two um, segments, we saw the results in people. In Canalin, where, which is the company that is working in order to reduce the cholesterol, the cholesterol and the triglyceride, we are working um, uh, to try to start the clinical trials in the next quarter. However, it was demonstrated quite well with three different animal uh, trials that we did. How do you feel about the current clinical market and who are the players? Are these pharmaceutical companies? Are these cannabis companies? And do they mesh together? You know, I feel like we're we are just a small baby. We're in the first year. We are very, very small baby. So we're talking about two different uh, actually even three different kinds of uh, companies. So there is those LPs that were mainly focused on uh, creating and having and distributing the cannabis uh, for recreational purpose. Later on, you have those companies that started to use cannabis as a solution as medical cannabis. Those two types of uh, companies are not yet in the drug development according to FDA regulations. This is a bit too much and too ahead for them. On the other side, we have the, um, the farmers, the big farmers that they know exactly how to make clinical trials, everything is known to them. However, cannabis is a bit new and especially in the States, it's a little bit not in regulation yet. So they are still watching what's happening. They are watching, but they are not entering yet. I do believe that once legalization will be in federal level in the States, we'll see huge movement and the first sign will be when one of those big uh, pharma biotech companies will buy GW Pharma for about 20, 30 billion dollars. And why do you think the pharma players aren't jumping at this? Besides from legalization, do you think it's their investor base? Um, it, when, when does the stigma around this change? It's moving uh, month after month, more evidence are getting uh, to the uh, clinical world. Every, every month or two, you read about another trial or attempt, uh, people see feedback, there are many, attempts to try to search for some kind of medication. Uh, patients that are even taking only medical cannabis are responding in better uh, quality of life. I think uh, I've been talking and I've been in a conference where you saw major attendance by pharma uh, people and you saw that they are eager to get the information. We are, we are getting uh, scout teams of different farmers, those major farmers that are coming to see what are the news, what is happening. They are all be getting prepared to the point of time where more evidence will be out there and where it will be more allowed in terms of regulation to search within the CBD or the cannabis um, 
products. I, I sense something will happen after the elections of the states. Yeah, I agree. Um, you spoke about regulation. Did your pipeline change due to COVID regulations? Um, you know, there were some rapid responses here by the Office of Innovation, by hospitals, in order to progress some research around uh, the virus. What, what was uh, the situation with you? Well, uh, actually, we think that we have a potential solution to part of the audience, of the patients. Um, our steroid patent covers the ability of giving CBD to COVID-19 patients that are getting steroids. And by that, we think that we could help to prevent the cytokine storm that is happening to some of the patients. We did apply uh, to Helsinki approval and what happened is a problem or something good. You know, it's the definition that we didn't have enough patients because uh, people started to feel good in Israel and there were no patients for our, for our clinical trials, so we delayed it. But we do have a potential solution covered by IP. Um, it was not implemented due to lack of patients. Uh, well, hopefully you never get a chance to, uh, to try that in, in person uh, and you can figure it out in the bench. Um, so lastly, as an experienced group in the clinical space, uh, what tips do you have for other people trying to make it in the pharmaceutical uh, cannabis research arena? First, don't start before securing $5 million. Uh, it's very costly uh, procedure. You're talking about many years, you're talking about large uh, clinical trials uh, effort. And do, I would uh, estimate that my best tip will be to ensure either a pharma partner or a major source of uh, money. We ensured at least one part. We ensured a great partner like Clelit to lower our costs and we showed some money. However, not enough money, and that's what is uh, making some obstacle to faster approach and making more parallel clinical trial. However, within our current resources, we are able to get to six clinical trials by the end of 2020, and this is a lot. Uh, the tip for other investors is first to use Israel as a potential uh, site because it's easier Regu uh, through regulation elements and the knowledge of the physicians is huge. Uh, and the second one, as I mentioned, make sure that you have enough money. Amazing. Thank you, David, for joining us on the Israel Cannabis Canatech podcast. Uh, you can stay tuned for more news of uh, patient data, clinical trials coming out from the Stero Canaline Canamore group. Uh, and uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity of uh, talking about the clinical trials. We are happy that we are doing this, and uh, we again thank you for the for this uh, great uh, option of uh, delivering some message of what's happening here. Thank you for listening to the Canatech podcast. If you'd like to be interviewed, let us know at podcast at israel-cannabis.com.